everybody and welcome back to Flock Talk. Today we're going to be reviewing some of your cages. On my pellet foraging ideas video, Jaden had left a comment suggesting that I do a video where I review your guys' cages. Now this video was originally done by Live Laugh Birds and I did double check with them. They have no issues with me copying their idea. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping on any toes, but she didn't have an issue with it. I put it out on Instagram and on Tumblr saying, hey, if you guys are interested, send me pictures of your cages and I'll review them. You guys came back with more cages than I can reasonably actually sort through. Um, I really wasn't expecting to get as many cages as I did, so I'm gonna do as many as I can in this video, and depending on how many are left, I might do a part two. So with that being said, we're gonna hop right on into it and look at some of the cages that you guys sent me. We're gonna start off here with the Instagram submissions. Out of all the platforms, Instagram did have the most submissions, so not all of your cages are going to be in this video. Um, I am sorry about that if you don't see your cage, it's nothing personal against it. I just unfortunately had to choose which ones to fit in, otherwise this video was going to be several hours long. So the first cage that we have here is from Brinks on Instagram, and it is for a little green cheek conure. So apparently this little conure's name is Pina, which is so cute, kind of like a little like Pina Colada. That's adorable. Um, this cage is beautiful. The size for this type of bird is actually quite good. The bar spacing is great. Um, I love how big that door is. I don't think I've actually seen a cage that size that has a door that wide. The top play stand, those things are always really nice because then you don't have to like a secondary poop tray you have to clean up. The one issue that can happen though is if you don't have a secondary play area for them at all. Um, and they only have that one place down on top, they can end up getting really defensive of that cage because that's the only area that they play in, that's the only area where their resources are. But if you have other play stands and things like that, then it's not generally a problem. I will say that this cage is a tiny bit crowded. Um, you did say that this was a play cage. I don't know if that means that this is, maybe this is just like the little play area that the bird goes to play and they have a secondary cage as well. Um, if this is just a play cage, then not a problem, whatever. But if this is a cage that the bird has to be in for eight hours a day, um, the amount of, like, the placement of things in here may actually crowd it a little bit. Um, bringing some stuff out and actually moving some of the perches will widen out that area a little bit more. Um, just because you actually have kind of three perches overlapping one another right there. I do like that natural wood one going right down the middle. It's got a really cool angle, which makes it really good for their feet. You could honestly probably get rid of one of those dowels, or I'd move it way up to the top, put it on an angle. And that whole top space, that whole top bubble, won't be so wasted in terms of the space. Because right now, realistically, the bird can't really do anything there. And if they're actually being enclosed in this cage at any point, because of how much clutter and how much space is, is filled, they can't really spread out their wings and flap them, which is really important if they're gonna be in the cage for long periods of time. The one thing I really, really liked about this cage was at the very, very bottom, there's a little blue disc. It's actually a Kong dog puzzle feeder, and it looks like they filled it with um, their vegetables and things. I'm assuming that's what that is, I can't really tell. But that's a really neat way to incorporate foraging ideas in Kongs and dog toys can absolutely be safe for birds, as long as you know that your bird doesn't tend to rip through and try and swallow those things. The fact that you did that for their vegetables is really, really cool. It's an awesome idea. So this next cage was submitted by Maddie. This is for a little lovebird. And can I just say that this is the nicest size cage I've seen for a lovebird. It's so hard to find really big cage sizes that have appropriate bar spacings. This one's perfect. It's got really narrow bar spacings. They're not too thick. The door is massive. I'm guessing this is supposed to be a finch flight cage as well, but I don't I don't know. Those bars look pretty sturdy. The one thing I will say that's a really common trend in all of these is that the whole bottom half of this cage is rather unutilized. You have a lot of space to work with here, but the whole bottom is basically empty. And I understand that most birds, when you put something down there, they won't go to it. And that's because they feel safe being up high. So if there's things down low, they don't tend to want to go to it. But if you've had things up high and there's particular toys that you know are their favorites, or there's toys that they know are used for foraging and have treats in them, put them down a little lower. Put a couple perches down there and slowly start shifting the toys lower and lower in the cage. That'll help start to teach them that they can go down low and they can explore those other parts of the environment and actually take advantage of all the space that they have. This one says she has three wood perches, two cotton perches, and a wooden dowel wrapped in vet wrap and six or more toys and she moves everything around once a month. So that's awesome. Toy rotation is such a good idea for keeping enrichment and keeping 
their environments more varied. It's really hard to see, but you can kind of make out the different wooden perches in there. A few of them look like they might be manzanita, I'm not sure. The only caution there would be that they all look like they have bark on them, which can be quite slippery and have similar effects to dowel perches, where it's kind of like going on monkey bars, where it's really, really slick against the feet and can cause sores and blisters. But you do have all of those natural, or all of those cotton perches, and you have a few other different ones. So it's likely not a problem. As long as there's enough variety and change in there, your bird won't really have any issues. This is really nicely set up. The perches are spread out really nicely. You've got a boing going from the ceiling. It looks like the twisted perch that the lovebird is actually on kind of twists and goes up at an angle. I love using those cotton perches for that because a lot of the time even natural wood perches come very straight and then it kind of defeats the purpose. You want those varied angles and things for their health. I could definitely see a few more toys in here. Lovebirds are very similar to parrotlets. They're very active. They have a lot of mental energy that they need to exert. Um, I know you said you rotate them out often. So depending on you know how many you rotate out and things like that, again, that might be a problem you completely avoid. But yeah, you're taking more use to that bottom space and having a few more toys and things could definitely help a little bit there otherwise this cage is beautiful you've got stainless steel dishes not plastic so there's no bacteria growth there or very limited bacteria growth there this is a really good cage it's a beautiful size this lovebird is like living in luxury so this next cage is for a little green parrotlet and these cages i am always very conflicted about because yes they do technically meet the minimum cage size requirements for the bird and yes they do tend to use more horizontal space than they do vertical but I'm always really conflicted by them because birds do like the vertical space. And you see that in a lot of cages the whole bottom goes unused because they don't want to be low. But that's where these cages kind of conflict for me, is that there is no where higher or lower for them to really go. So unless you have them already up on a really really high table or up on a high dresser or something, they can often feel really uncomfortable and really unsafe just because the cage itself puts them in a much lower position than they'd ideally like to be. You're utilizing all four walls for the perches. Most of your perches are very, very flat though. I would definitely recommend getting some more natural wood ones or going and finding a boing perch or a fabric cotton perch that you can use to kind of give it a bit more depth because as I've said, flat perches can be really bad for their feet. If you can't go out and get some, just take some of your dowels and put them on an angle. It's not perfect, but it does shift the pressure points that their feet are on and does make it a little bit nicer. The hut worries me. Parrotlets can be very, very aggressive, especially when they're hormonal. And huts are basically just a nesting site. And you can end up getting a lot of aggressive behavior. And huts also just tend to have really bad habits for birds wanting to regurgitate on them or for them getting their feet caught or swallowing fibers. So I'm personally not a huge fan of those huts and they just they take up a lot of space with a cage that could be used more for enrichment you could definitely just switch it out for like a preening toy that has more loose threads that they can go and they can cuddle in get a similar effect with them staying warm and cuddling against something but not quite as much where you're getting the hormonal responses this one i wanted to post because this bird's name is crumpet she's so cute she looks like a little crumpet she looks like a little muffin, I just, I just want to eat her. She's so cute. This cage is appropriate for a cockatiel. It is the minimum cage size requirement for them. Personally, I like to have a little bit more space for them. What did you say here? This is my cockatiel crumpets cage. It's a bit small, but I'm upgrading her soon and she's out most of the day and mostly just eats and sleeps in there. So you kind of nailed it on the head. This cage is a little bit small for my preferences. I believe it looks like it's actually just barely the minimum cage size requirements, which basically just means that they can stretch their wings out and flap a little bit to get some sort of exercise. The other thing I would suggest here though is that your water dish is plastic and your food dish is stainless steel. I'd switch that around, put the food in the plastic and the water in the stainless steel. Water's gonna build up a lot more bacteria than dry pellets or dry seeds are. The spring perch, always a good idea. A lot of good per perching variety in there, a lot of good depth. The mineral one, do be careful of. I know you have a white bird, so often those things do dye their feet. And if she does eat that perch, she can accidentally ingest too much of it and end up with a vitamin overdose. You got lots of toys in there. You've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got six different types of toys. It looks like you've got some foraging going on in the back. You have a lot of variety and texture with your toys there, so you're doing a really great job with the amount of size and space that you do have with this cage. Lovebird people are just kicking it out of the park today. Up next we have Alexis. 
uh, on Instagram. Honestly, this cage is my favorite so far today. Really nice size. It looks like it's a very sturdy well-made cage. You can see the really thick bars around the door. You've got a lot of natural branches going on in there. You've taken advantage of your rope perch and made it really big and curvy. The whole thing is jam-packed with toys. It looks like you have a lot of foraging. You're using the full width of the space. It's really well done. It's very cool. You've even turned the bottom actually into a little play zone by the looks of it with a toy hanging off of it. They left me a little note saying that the towel that's hanging off the top there is to prevent a draft from coming in. That's a nice little added bonus. I'm assuming they probably sleep closer to the top in that corner. So it's nice just to be able to have that bit more warmth than around the top of the cage. Honestly, there's nothing I would really change about this cage. I mean, there's always room for more toys. There's always room for more things. Um, the only thing I, again, would suggest would just be the dishes. I know those are dishes that probably came with the cage and go with the design of it. Um, but again, the plastic can build a lot of bacteria, so you may want to switch those out for stainless steel if you get the chance. Totally up to you though. The only other thing I would be wary of is that you have some toys in there that are metal bells that are very open at the bottom. Um, if your bird doesn't go for them, not a problem, but there have been a few cases where birds have actually chewed the little dingly bits off of the bells and accidentally swallowed them. So just be cautious of that if your bird doesn't really go for it, whatever, and if the sound of the bells doesn't produce aggressive behavior, whatever, it's not the end of the world. But just something to keep an eye on if you do see your bird trying to nibble at the nubs, it may be suggested just to kind of clip them off with wire cutters or something or just peel them off. I would let my birds live in this cage. This is awesome. You've even got some foot toys on the bottom. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful cage. Well done, Alexis. So that's going to do it for today. There are quite a few cages on Instagram, so I'm very sorry if I didn't get to it. Um, I will be making another one that's all the submissions that happen through Tumblr as well as through the email. Um, in part two. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for submitting your cages. You have some beautiful setups. You guys definitely put a lot of care and passion into your birds. I really appreciate you guys supporting me here and sending in all these cages. I really didn't expect to get as many as I did. So thank you guys so much for doing that. It's really nice to see all the community and the support and all of the like unity to, to make this happen. It's really cool. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, but that's gonna do it for today. So I will see you all in part two.